Good afternoon. Good to have you here at Bethany. If you're watching online or you're watching on YouTube, then we welcome you here to our church service. We uh, got a few songs to sing. Very pleased to have David Buckin with us. Um, I won't say how long I've known David or how long he's known me, but it goes back quite a quite a while. So we're, we're very pleased to have David back with us here in the church. We're going to sing the first song, Praise is Rising. If you're able to stand for it, then please do so. And if you want to sit, that's equally okay. afternoon. Um, welcome to new people who have walked in at our door uh, this lunchtime. Uh, it's, like, it's incredible how just the, a sign uh, that's up in the street can invite people in and uh, welcome to Kingsley and your family here uh, this afternoon. We've just seen Two very special people come in the back. Now, some of you may know, 
Some of you may not know that Andrew became an uncle yesterday. <laughs> and I, and Abraham became grandparents. So, blessings to you and your family, to Adam and, and to Emma. Toby, I, I will not pronounce the full version of, of the baby's name, but Toby uh, uh, is a cute name. Yes, it is. Born yesterday morning, uh, and everybody's doing okay. So, all of you ladies can go and ask all of the important questions, <laughs> and all of the important answers will be given. But you can see what a beaming smile I has got on her face uh, this afternoon. So every blessing to, to you and the family. I'm sure Abraham is delighted as well uh, over there in, in Botswana. Let's have a prayer and uh, ask God's blessing this afternoon. Heavenly Father, we thank you that we can sing this afternoon, Hosanna. You are the God who saved us, worthy of all our praises. And Father, we want to praise you this afternoon we want to thank you for all the blessings that you've given to us and especially the blessing on on the Ogwe family with with Toby being born yesterday we really do pray a blessing on that child and his parents and grandparents and uncle and the rest of the family father we just really want to say thank you for safety and the baby being being born and for all that will take place in his life father we just pray a blessing on it. Be with us today, be with David as he comes and shares uh, with us. We thank you for him and uh, the work that he's doing over in hell as well. Father, bless him to Barton. We do pray that you would be uh, with him too. And for all who are, are watching on home, uh, we really just want to impart a blessing on them too. We think of many people who watch uh, on YouTube who can't make it out anymore. But Father, we thank you that we've been able to do this and been able to come right into people's homes where the devil thought the doors of churches were closing with COVID how wrong he was because the doors were flung wide open uh, with, with multimedia and with YouTube and with, with people to watch online and Father we really do want to just say thank you for us being able to be part of that and for those who watch at home Father we really do pray a blessing on them too so we ask that you'll be with us bless us today we pray in your precious name. Amen. I'm going to show you a video. And it was written by uh, an American uh, musician called Spencer Roth. Does anybody know who Spencer Roth is? No, neither did I until I found his video. But <coughs> he wrote this song, You Are My Strength. Just as COVID kicked in, in 2020 and all of us experienced dark days when we were locked down in our houses when we couldn't go out we couldn't meet with family uh, we couldn't come to church uh, for a long time and he wrote uh, he wrote this song in the midst of all of that and there's a number of of different sentences and lyrics in it um, when days were dark found that Jesus was his strength and that's what we all have available to us today that we can put our strength in Jesus when times are hard and times do get hard nobody has an easy an easy go of it none of us but in those times where you think you're struggling search out Jesus and, and ask him for help so we're going to show the video now and uh, hopefully you can maybe get maybe one line maybe maybe lots of lines from it but this is called you are my strength. I can rest within your love Deep inside your shadow I am safe In the secret places Is where you're meeting me When I'm with you I am not afraid The all around me fall You 
set my feet to stand. You hold my every breath within your hand. Under your covering, you will hold on to me through the battle. Your arms carry me, my defender, my refuge. You are my Carry me, my defender, my refuge. You are my strength. How many of us have experienced times where? We've really felt God's arms carrying us and, and defending us. David will give you many aspects of being in full-time Christian service where the devil was at work and wanting to destroy things. And through prayer and through asking God for help, um, they've overcome. And that's what we have today. That's, that's the great assurance that we have and the wonderful promise that God will be with us when we ask him for help. So with that, we're going to sing a song. Strength will rise as we wait upon the Lord. We'll wait upon the Lord. I went on a, a gloating when I was 21, which is many decades ago. And the verse that I still remember uh, was, We will mount on wings like eagles. Now, I couldn't speak, well, I could speak two words of French. Uh, bonjour was one of them. And the only other word that I remembered from studying French at school was boîte à lettre, which means letterbox. Right? Why I remembered that, song, that word, I will never know. But I went with my brother, and we went to Marseille, which is down in the south of France, 
very lovely part of the, the country. We travelled on the TGV, which is France's fastest train, which was amazing. And then we ended up uh, in, in Marseille to go and help the local church there. And one of the things that we had to do was to deliver uh, John's Gospels into a housing estate. And like many places here, there's door entry systems. And what you had to say when you got there and the door was closed was distribution, a boite, a letter. Can I distribute in your letterbox? And sometimes French people would say a sentence, which I would just continue to say my one sentence that I had for the week. But over that whole course of, of two weeks, we delivered somewhere in the region of 8,000 John's Gospels into people's homes. And that, that verse that we got there will mount on wings like eagles. Taking that strength from God, I've never forgotten. And uh, we've had many times of hardship. We've had many times of, of struggle. But um, take that on board uh, and have that as your verse today. Uh, when times get hard, put your strength and your hope in God. So let's sing this song as we, we think on that.
draws near and my time has come Blessed be your name in the land that is plentiful, where your streams of abundance flow, abundant blessing. That's what God gives to us. That's something that we've experienced this past year since we reopened, is the abundant blessing God's been giving to us. New people coming, people being saved, and just God's imparting on, on all of us. So let's sing this last song. Let's sing it out uh, to his praise.
singing or the band playing it. I have to admit, I enjoyed playing that. That was good. <laughs> uh, but that's the whole, the whole ethos of what we're here for is to give God the blessing and the praise that's due his name. Listen to his voice speaking to us. And I'm going to ask David to come up now and, and give us today's message, what God has given to him to share with us here in church and with you watching online. And we really do pray a blessing on you, David, for that. Thank you. Good to see you all. And to those at home, I don't know where the camera is, but I'll wave out there. And to those at home, are you still in your slippers? Got the coffee on? I hope you're enjoying it too. And we sang there, my heart will choose to say, choose to praise God today. That can be difficult, can't it? To choose to praise God today. At least twice in this last week when I was going to my work, I said, Lord, I need your help today. <laughs> I'm going to be facing things uh, in my work that I need wisdom for. I need help and strength. And maybe you're in that situation today as well, and you think about your family or your work as well. And I was thinking last night, and this question came to my mind, and maybe you've asked this question. Do you ever ask yourself, does God really love me? We sing about it. We love to sing about the love of God. We love to read about the word of God in the Bible. But maybe you've asked that question or you're asking this question. Does God really love me today? Maybe you've been in a difficult place. I don't know. I spent five days in Paisley just at the end of February. It wasn't my choice. I felt ill at work. <laughs> and because I work in a, a service where there's nurses as well as social workers, the nurses were all running about, taking my blood pressure and all this. And it was sky high and I was being sick and everything. And they got an ambulance for me and took me over to um, the hospital. And I was thankful of that. They were able to run tests, and I was okay. After five days, I could go home. But it was a wee bit of a, a scare, just as my body was, I think it was a viral infection or something that was uh, affecting me, affecting my heart and my, uh, you know, just my blood pressure. So that was an interesting experience. I haven't been in hospital for a long time. But I was thankful for the care that I received. But it does make you stop and think just about what is important in life. Yes, we want to have good health, but we want to know God as well. So maybe you've been in a difficult place with difficulties at work or at home or with your health. Maybe you're having problems with people. <laughs> that can be difficult, whether it's people that you work with or live with in your marriage. Maybe the stress with, with children as they grow up. Maybe you've asked God to help you with something and you feel that he hasn't helped you. And maybe you've cried out to God and you said, if you loved me, God, you would help me with this. You would, um, you would let this happen. So maybe you come to doubt that God loves you. 
Paul, in the, his letter to a group of Christians in Ephesus, wrote these words in chapter 3. Paul, it's Ephesians chapter 3. And at verse 16, he's praying for them and he says this, I pray that out of his glorious riches, God may strengthen you with power through his spirit in your inner being so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. And I pray that you being rooted and established in love may have power together with all the saints to grasp how wide and long and high and deep is the love of Christ and to know this love that surpasses knowledge that you may be filled to the measure of all the fullness of God God wants you to know his love and experience it today and every day way back in April 1962 Carol Barth he was uh, one of these famous um, theologians he was a Swiss-German theologian, and he's written a lot of books, and he's influenced a lot of what we believe theology is the study of God and Christian beliefs. And he was speaking at a university in America, in Chicago, and one of the students at the question and answer time asked Carol Barth, how would you sum up your theology, your beliefs, in one sentence? And that's hard. If he's written books, how would he do it in one sentence? So he thought for a moment and he said this. In the words of a song that I learnt at my mother's knee, Jesus loves me. This I know, for the Bible tells me so. A simple song, but a tremendous truth. And I want to explore this idea of God's love with you for a short time this morning. We're going to watch a video and this video illustrates the fact that true love changes us. Now, I haven't got, I don't think the subtitles in this video. The girl uh, speaks with a Glasgow accent. So you may struggle to understand. But what she's saying is, um, she's explaining, her name is Aisha. And she's, she went to a church where there was a, what was called a recovery cafe. That's for people who are going through recovery with maybe alcohol or drug issues. And she was going there to sell drugs. <laughs> but she got such a welcome there and uh, was loved and accepted, even though she wasn't in the right place that you could say. And she explains what that did to her. A guy used to buy drugs off me, he was standing there, he's like, wow, well, you've changed so much. Couldn't have made a better decision. And this is, I know that. And there's no turning back for me, definitely no. My name's Asha, and this is my story. When I talk about church, I say I'm part of church, because I was never part of anything, never part of my family. And I grew up with six, five, six girls, two boys in the family, my mum and dad. I actually left the house when I was 12 years old. Started drinking when I was 12, and that progressed to drugs when I was 14. Through my life, um, I'd done a lot of dishonest things, and I used to sell drugs. And I actually sold drugs on the street for 12 years and I never ever knew the church was there, I never knew it was a church. One day I walked into that church um, in a recovery cafe that was on and um, I actually walked in to sell drugs. But God never let that happen. Um, God actually put somebody in my path that day. Um, I'd seen what people had in the church and I was like, I want some of that. We were doing a Bible study, um, Adele said, if you let Jesus into your heart, you'll be forgiven for all your sins. And that just uh, spoke volumes to me and I wanted to do that. Through all that, I never had to use because the church were guiding me through, you know, and I'd never had to use drugs again and I just thought that was absolutely amazing. So I got baptised and I was actually able to forgive myself for a lot of things that I'd done. And I'd never had a connection with my mum because I used, she used to beat me when I was younger. and. The first, day, first time I ever went back, she says to me, I have my sixth daughter back, and that was just amazing. And I wasn't allowed to see my wee boy through having seven court cases against me eh, for selling drugs and shoplifting. But we come into church and doing the things that I do, and all these court cases just disappeared. It was just, I was like, thank you, God. <laughs> it was just amazing. Having a life with Jesus is just the best thing ever, and if you don't try it, how are you going to know? 
I was totally broken when I got here, but I feel alive again. I do feel like a kid again, but I'm learning how to live again. Isn't God good? And God is great. And God is able to save. A guy called Richard Halverson said this, There is nothing you can do to make God love you more. There is nothing you can do to make God love you less. His love is unconditional, impartial, everlasting, infinite, and perfect. True love changes people, changes you and me. And true love is unconditional. I mean, how do you know if someone loves you? I mean, really loves you? Well, we call it is unconditional love. It's not conditional. It doesn't mean you have to do things to earn that love, that you have to meet someone's expectations. There's no strings attached, we say. Conditional love is a love that's based on certain conditions being met. The expectations that people have about you or that you have to meet them. But the problem with conditional love is this, that it stops when you don't meet the expectations, when you don't live up to what they want you to be or do what they wish. So it stops the moment that happens. So a person maybe withholds their love from you or you withhold your love from them. But unconditional love is different. It's the opposite. It means it's without strings, without conditions. Someone is able to love you when you're even at your lowest point. Someone is able to love you when you're the least successful. And they're able to love you freely with no strings attached. Some people worry about, will I, what can I do to be loved, to be accepted by someone? And they try and please and please more and more. And that's a symptom of, uncond of conditional love. When someone only gives love in certain, certain circumstances... They hold their love back and you feel like you never measure up and you feel like you're not good enough and maybe you feel that um, you're there to make the other person feel good about them. But l true love is unconditional. Just come as you are. Be changed by the love of God. But I want to say another thing. I want to tell you that true love is unconditional, but it's not without cost. Real love costs something. So when you ask the question, well, how do I know Jesus loves me? Now, that could be a subjective question. You think, well, if I feel good, if I feel right, maybe Jesus loves me. It's not dependent on your feelings. Someone has said this, the only objective evidence of the saving love of God and Christ for his people is the cross on which Jesus died. So we have something in history, a definite place and time and event, the cross of Christ, where he died for all the sins of the world. Paul wrote this in Romans. God shows his love for us that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. And then he wrote another letter saying, and the Son of God loved me and gave himself for me. And when you begin to realize that, when you accept the truth of the, the gospel or the good news that Christ died for sins, but he rose again to bring new life and forgiveness to each one of us, that is inspiring, isn't it? That sets us alive and aflame in our hearts. He gave himself for me. Someone it was Augustine, one of the early Christians in the first century, he said, the cross was the pulpit in which Christ preached his love. And someone was inspired by that thought and wrote a hymn. You've maybe heard of this hymn. It's, uh, it's by Isaac Watts, an old hymn in the 1700s. He said, when I survey the wondrous cross on which the Prince of Glory died, my richest gain I count but loss and poor contempt on all my pride. 
A more modern hymn puts it this way. It's a song called, What a Beautiful Name. And in it, there's a line that says this. My sin was great. Your love was greater. As he speaks to God or she speaks to God. And that's so true, isn't it? Thank God that his love is greater than our mistakes, our sins, our faults, our failings. Billy Graham, the evangelist, said this. The cross shows us the seriousness of our sin, but it also shows us the immeasurable love of God. Um, when we moved from Scotland to go to live in France, we had to go to language school. I don't know if any of you are going to language school today. You have to learn lots of languages when you come to Britain, some sort of English and then uh, Glaswegian <laughs> as well. Well, we, had to lower, we spent a year trying to learn French and then we lived in France for a further 10 years after that. And I remember in the language school up at um, the, 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 the French Swiss Alps, there was a big mountain behind the school called La Belle Etoile. And the Belle Etoile was a big mountain, um, 1,800 odd meters high. It's about double the size of Ben Lomond. So if you haven't been a, a high hill in Scotland yet, go, to, go past where I live in Dumbarton, go up the loch, Lomond, and you'll see um, Ben Lomond. That's what we call a hill in Scotland, a mountain in Scotland, a Ben. And so it's only half the size of this one. So we're up one day and we reach the top and at the very top there's a cross. But I noticed also there was a ridge and it was a very narrow ridge, about the, the width of the carpet there in the centre of the, of the aisle. And there's a, a, a you know, steep drop on both sides. So is this ridge going to from the, the mountain we were on to another mountain? We thought, let's try and go to the other hill because it's just going across this wee ridge. And I thought, but it's awfully steep both sides. And then I saw some crosses. I said, so what are these wee crosses? You know, there's one there, there's another couple on that side. Well, so that's where people slipped and died. <laughs> so I said, I don't think I really want to do that today. So we didn't bother going that way today. We just stayed at the top. But it, it illustrates something for me which I want to explain to you. A way to imagine that that ridge is the love of God. And on one steep side you've got justice. And on the other steep side, you've got mercy. And you see, the love of God is what carries both these elements. If you only have justice, if you're only about telling people, you've done wrong, you've sinned, God's going to judge you, that's not good news. <laughs> if you only go for mercy and say, God loves you, don't worry about how you live, just do whatever you want, God will be merciful, that's not good news. We need to know that sin has been dealt with. Other than that, why would we let all these people that are dictators and all these people that have murdered so many people go? God will judge them with judgment and mercy. But if they don't cry out for mercy, they're not going to get it. They need to experience the love of God at the cross where justice and mercy meet and God's demands are met but his love is poured out. I hope that isn't too complicated. But sometimes we've erred, I believe, in our preaching. We talk about one or we talk about the other. We need to talk about the whole counsel of God and preach that, yes, we are under judgment. We have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. But yes, is a Savior who comes with mercy and love to redeem us and to bring us back to God. It's a very important theology to, to grasp. And true love incorporates that. Love incorporates proper judgment and mercy. But the other thing I want to tell you about love as we finish is that true love is forever, no matter what. I wonder if your circumstances ever cause you to question God's love for you. That's how we started today on the back of that song that we sang. And I want us to look at um, some verses together in the book of Romans. Romans chapter 8. Now, we're not going to do a Bible study of Romans chapter 8, but it's a fantastic um, book, but it's also a fantastic chapter to look at. The very first thing it says in verse 1, it says, There is no condemnation from those who are in Christ Jesus. So Paul talks about no condemnation, because true love doesn't condemn you all the time and bring up all the past. And then in verse 12, 
he says we have an obligation, but it is not to the sinful nature. There's no obligation to live the old life. We can choose to live a new life with the power of God in us. So there's no condemnation. There's no obligation to live the same old way. And then he talks about for, um, creation groaning. And in verse 20, for the creation was subjected to frustration, not by its own choice, but by the will of those who subjected it. So he's talking about the difficulties of a, a fallen world. And he's saying there's no more frustration. There's going to come a time when that happens, no frustration. But the bit we're going to focus on this morning is uh, verse 31. What Paul talks about, no separation from the love of God. So there's some uh, little pointers in this chapter. No condemnation, no obligation to live the old way. No frustration will last forever because God will bring a new heaven, a new earth. But in verse, so let's look at verse 31. What shall we say in response to this? If God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all. How will he not also, along with him, graciously give us all things? Who will bring any charge against those whom God has chosen? It is God who justifies. Who is it, he, who is it that condemns? Christ Jesus, who died, more than that, who was raised to life, is at the right hand of God and is also interceding for us. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Now listen. He's going to list 17 things that could separate you from God's love. Let's listen to what this is. So 17 things that could separate us. He says, Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall trouble or hardship or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or sword, as it is written, for your sake we face death all day long. We are considered as sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. So these troubles, these difficulties, all these events that happen in life, they try and pull you away from the love of God. And Paul is able to declare, nothing can separate us from the love of Christ. And that's encouraging, isn't it, today? And that's why people like uh, these hymn writers could say, love so amazing, so divine, demands my soul, my life, my all. I want to finish with the little, what you could call a, do a doxology, a little hymn of praise to God because of that. His love is great. His love changes us. His love is unconditional. His love is, um, is forever. And it doesn't, we're not separated from it. So then Paul says in Ephesians chapter 3, Now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine, according to his power that is at work within us, to him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations, forever and ever. Amen.